I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. As sorry says, 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive a review. Positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. On the docket tonight. Uh, the next song up on his list is War Babies, Hang Me Up. Uh, he said, this band came out during what I call the gray period of rock. The transition from 80s hair metal to 90s grunge. Hmm. This song got modest airplay, and the band never really took off, but the debut album had a number of really good songs and catchy hooks. Let's check it out. All right, here we go. Here we go. This one should be good. Catchy hooks, you say. I'll be the judge of that. Let's check it out, dear listener. song is this? War Babies. The name of the song is Hang Me Up. Whoa. Get those lyrics.
Right. I wish I knew what that that method was when people did that. When the people make that noise, that la la la. I wish I knew what the technical term for that. Uh, <laughs> uh, if anybody knows, let us know in the comment section. <laughs> Teddy, uh, Teddy Patton is hilarious. This dude. No real Christian man would have effeminate looks. This is commie, this is commie BS, he, say, he calls it commie BS because the guys had long hair or whatever. Is that what? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't like, know what it was over. I was like, what is, where is this coming he's from? He's hilarious, bro. I love him. He's so funny, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's like straight out of 1928. All right. <laughs> 1928. <laughs> I swear to God. All right. Uh, I swear to God, dude. All right. To be honest with you, this song a little bit confused me. Television, prostitution, pimp, and God? I didn't understand. Literally, the first line started out, and I was like, what? Tell me who killed the Lord in the first place. Was it you saw a 900-foot Jesus in Tulsa, Oklahoma? It's true. They said, we like, like being, being dead. dead, too scared to run, and what makes you so divine? Show some faith. Show, show me some tenderness. Sh uh, shower me with love, with love and forgiveness. Bleed my soul. Take my advice, but don't hang me up like Jesus Christ. You forget... I ain't living for you. Cut me to the quick. Call the kettle black and we're through. The only way is out through the window pane. It'll do. So tired of your deceiving. Nothing more we could believe in. And we're feeling so sublime. Then he just keeps repeating. Repeating. Show me faith, tenderness, love, so forgiveness. It looks like it, my soul. Take my advice. It looks like uh, Don't hang me up like it's Jesus a bad Christ. relationship song, right? Because mm. he, he says... It uh, that way. What are you talking about? The pot calling the kettle black right yeah, there? Yeah. Which is a it's a that's a phrase when somebody makes a hypocritical statement, mm -hmm. right? There goes the cut the pot. Calling the so, kettle black, yeah. So that's so that's either this could be a an attack against the church, maybe. Hmm. Because there's you know, television oh, prostitution, pimping God. Like so the, the uh Oh, the, the television the people that are always getting the money from people and lying to people yeah. and, and making money off them. And wow, right, it ain't the nothing new. Tell me who killed the Lord in the first place. Was it you? Wow. Right. 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 Because in their ministry, they essentially do kill Christ. Because Well, it depends. Like some of those some of those television preachers literally have done that. They, they, they do not promote Jesus Christ. They promote some other message that gets them money. Well, yeah. And I mean... Come on, man. Like, uh, I, I grew up... See, I that was a stream that I grew up in. I grew up in that in that stream of thought. Like, I I have seen these guys, like, tell old ladies, like, look right into the camera. He's like, there's an old lady somewhere, and you're... you're if you don't pay us, you're not going to pay your light bill, but you need to sow yes. that seed. You need to sow yeah. that seed, and, you know, you, you got to demonstrate to God that you have that kind of faith, you know, blah, blah, blah. And like these dudes is like swindling these these women. I uh, listen. I'm gonna tell you guys out, the story. Out of their out of their capital with these with these crazy false promises. So we we there was this like uh, ministry, I guess you could say, that was like downtown where they were helping the community and stuff. I can't remember the name of it now, but it was a it was a popular name in, in, in locally. In a, yeah, remember it was down it was downtown. We went it wasn't open doors. It was well, I know you'll you know. you'll remember you'll yeah, remember yeah, yeah, as yeah. I'm talking. Anyway, so we we were taking part in this. They were just opening up. So basically, they were trying to tell everybody in the community where they were and that they could go there for resources and spirituality and stuff. So we weren't a part of their crew, but we heard they were trying to get the message out. And so we're Christians. They're Christians. So we jumped over there. Actually, Vinny and I, we didn't even really know each other at that point. That was the first time that we prayed together. And I was so impressed because you... Uh, like I told the guy, because the guy was talking about stuff and he, he was basically saying, this is a side story on a side story. That guy was basically saying like how shitty his life was, but he wasn't acknowledging anything that he was doing wrong to make his life that way. Right. And so then I started talking about repentance and then you prayed for him and you prayed like, it was so powerful. I was like, wow, that was so cool. Uh, it's probably at that moment that I was like, yo, it's too bad that guy's married. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but anyway, so we were going, we were bringing out water to people and also just letting them know where the place was. Well, I, I went into this lady's house, like she had signs on her windows that said oxygen in use, blah, blah, blah. So um, she invited me in and she was probably ooh, 60, I'd say 50, 60 years old. And um, she was, she had like a lot of like kind of spiritual paraphernalia around her house and she was really talkative and sharing a lot with me. Anyway, long story short. She was telling me because she was really proud of it. She was like, oh, look what I've been doing. She's like, I give 
mostly all of my money that I get to this to this church group. And she brings me the papers. And it was like, I, I wish I could tell you the name of the place so you guys could look it up. But I, I think it said something about Matthew Seed or something like that. But anyway, basically what it was, they they t they were telling you, literally it was in the print up that you, that you would give them money and that that was the seeds to get whatever it was that you wanted. Well, she had a son that, that wouldn't come around that often because he was, you know, he's running the streets and whatever. And so when he would come around, she was always afraid that something bad was going to happen to him. So she was giving all of her money and like, she, she didn't have an income. She, the only income that she had was what the state was giving her. So she didn't have very much. And so she was giving all of it to this place. And I, and I was like, oh my God. And I felt so bad because I said, I had to tell her that they were bamboozling her. And it was so sad because she was like, it was, it was hard to tell a mother, like there is no there's there's no silver bullet there's no like amount of money that you can pay that can make it so that way you can be god yeah We're something not. something that has metastasized over years whatever the dysfunction was between her and her son is not going to be fixed this by money televangelist if... knows that there are thousands of lonely people so wrong vulnerable people in these terrible situations and then he, he essentially pimps God himself yeah. because here yeah. you are you're saying you give me this exchange of capital and then I will deploy God to act on your behalf because God reports it it's just it's it's insane it's, it's unbelievable it's absolutely insane but I'll tell you she was terrified to cancel that thing she said I can't stop giving them and I said well I mean I can call them for because I I showed her the scriptures I explained the things to her and I I explained to her that all that was necessary the only the only thing that we can do for our kids um, in, in that regard, when they're out of the house, you could, she's got to pray for them. And, oh no, what? When a chick is turned on by the guy's prayer, you know the union is blessed. <laughs> it was kind of weird to hear you say that. But. I didn't say turned on. I said, <laughs> that was like, okay, this is somebody we could build. We, yeah, that's somebody married. I can build I mean, ministry you know, with. Yeah, but it was in the context of prayer. You that's, guys a, are that's a hell of a oh, I mean, she, I wasn't turned on by it, she, but she, <laughs> anyway, wow. You guys are weird, and now I'm getting, I'm feeling weird about it. Um, but yeah, it was really sad. It was, it was like, because she was terrified that if she stopped sending the money that her son would die. And, you know, in this moment, I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, I, I don't friggin' know if it wasn't in God's plan to take that child home two weeks from after when I canceled that. I certainly hope not. <laughs> I doubt yeah, but, it. But, you know, Jesus said, he said that uh, the people who devour a widow's house will be punished most severely. Mm. Like, uh, like in other words, there's a special place in hell. Like, there are absolute, this is a misconception a lot of Christians have, that there are not degrees of sin, that God looks at all sin the same. Mm -hmm. That's not true. Jesus specifically said oh, yeah. that people who take advantage of uh, destitute women are going to be punished most severely. So, like, these people are going to be punished. And it's like, I understand people saying, oh, this is what religion does. But the fact of the matter is, the only people that could be swindled by this stuff are people that do not know their religion. Yep. Yep. See, because that's, that's, the that's thing. what I had to show her this, what that Bible actually Sadat. said to right. show her that this, it was wrong. And I said, these people, these people are not, God is not behind what these people are doing. And I called that, that place too. And I, I did cancel her membership and I told them how horrible of people I thought that they were to use God in such a manner to take care, to take advantage of someone in that situation. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, un, unbelievable. Um, yeah. Like there, there, there's, you know, like it, it's, it's really interesting. Like there. There is not one single positive thing said about rich people in the New Testament. <laughs> well, yeah, because... <laughs> not a single thing that's said positively. And my, my point is, like, as an American, like, that should, like, make you stop and mm -hmm. think for a second. Because I've said a million times, like, that right there is... Okay, so I'm, I'm going to put this up here because apparently... Somebody was saying that Jesus didn't say that. So let me provide the actual address. Here you go. And in his teaching, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and like greetings in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogue 
and the places of honor at feast, who devour widows' houses and for a pretense make long prayers, they will receive the greater condemnation. And and literally, there was a big giant prayer in there for the people when they would donate. And they, they would send them this prayer rug, which was actually a piece of paper that looked like a right. rug. So so these people, this is, there. you see right there, they will receive the greater condemnation. The, the updated way of saying that, the 2023 way of saying that is to say there's a special place in hell for people that do that. You devour widows' homes and then you make lengthy prayers. And by the way, there's a connection between the two because you're projecting that you're like this super spiritual person yep, with this, this very long right prayer so that you can so that you can swindle these people out of their out of their money, out of their inheritance. Like you're gonna be punished most severely. But you know, the problem is is that there's a whole bunch of Christian bands and Christian churches out there, like they should have been making this song. Mm -hmm. But because you're we won't right. make the, we, because right. we won't make the song then it then yep. it, it's up to the secularists mm -hmm. to make the song. That's what Paul told the Corinthians. He said, "If we if we would have judged ourselves, we wouldn't be judged along with the world." So, like, you we should have just judged ourselves before, but since we won't, now we got people out here telling the real God's honest truth. Like this is the shit that's been going on, and it's been, you know, that's why I'm saying like the decline of Western churchianity. I'm not sure is a bad thing. Like. I'd much rather them stay at home and listen to their Metallica and Behemoth than go to a church and, and listen to a dude, Jesus, old lady, out of the remaining capital that she has left. Because that'll create an unbeliever quicker than you quicker than you can say a uh, liar there. So, yeah, man. Um, my family's Catholic, and I told someone I know we didn't really go to church, and she ended up telling me that my family aren't religious. And well, yeah, according to Catholicism, oh, missing, yeah, I've been told I'm going to hell missing, by my grandfather. Missing church on purpose is a mortal sin. Missing mass on purpose is a mortal sin. So, so yeah, like it's a mortal sin. It's a, it's a very bad one. And if you guys are well, not, it's not churching consistently in Roman Catholic theology, it's absolutely. It's not necessarily church. It's more that they, you're not taking part in their communion, which is the the Eucharist. So, like, it's if. Yeah, the body, blood, soul, and the. That's of the Christ big thing the because they're saying you're not partaking because they believe yeah. that when they do communion, it literally turns into Jesus's flesh, and they're saying if you don't consume his flesh, then you're not going to have. The Council of Trent though declared not going to mass is a mortal sin, but. Yeah, I mean, definitely the Eucharist is the center of the Mass. but Not going to Mass period. ever. Not going to Mass, period. And it's enough. not because of it's the communion? It's a mortal sin. I thought the reason was because they needed well, to partake well, in communion. Well, the Eucharist is the centerpiece of, of the Mass, but the Mass itself has to be done in total. Oh, okay. It's I'm just, just going the, by my but, Catholic family. But, but by... I mean, to the letter of the law of Catholicism, yeah, your family wouldn't be looked upon as a religious family if they're not consistently churching. And I'm not saying that people don't need a community. You need a community, especially especially in these days and times. We all know that we need a community. Mm -hmm. It's just the way that those communities are formed and the way that those expressions are done... Um, what we call church is 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 the is the bug in the ointment is what I would say. That that's the difference. Okay. So, um, so that's, no. Yeah, you, that's pretty you, interesting. You don't yeah. need to go to a building, but just like, and 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 this is really, especially our generation, we understand this. Like, if you go to the internet, whatever your your particular niche is, you're going to congregate with other people. Mm -hmm. Like it's happening right now on this channel. If 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 your main primary interest was you know Dungeons and Dragons, you mm -hmm. you'd find a group of people that do that. So my point is like, you do this naturally. Anytime you you adopt a position that you actually identify with as a person, mm -hmm. the very first thing that you do on instinct is you find a community that has that same yeah. sort of like self identification, yeah. and you just do life together with those people. That's all it means. So how that gets manifested in the world is going to be different. Some people say we're going to do we're going to go to a building once a week. Other people say we're going to meet in my house. Other people say we're going to meet online. Like it just But, but the point is that you're on how, meeting, it, how it works. You're meeting with your crew so um 
there's a lot that can be shared amongst you because everybody has, it, it would be like if you were studying, like let's say we had like this, this treasure and there was tons of information that we had to study so we could find this treasure. So the idea is that everybody is on their own pursuit of God and everybody is, everybody expresses God because we're all made in the image and likeness of God, the scripture says. So you're going to see a different, a different side of what God is like when you're looking at somebody, somebody might be super kind or they're really artistic or like there's all these positive things that express and show us what God is like. Um, but we need each other to get a deeper understanding of God. And also we connect within each other and that, that helps us to, to broaden our searches of God because we can again, share information and it's encouraging too to be like, lo, I found this. And we've, we had that experience a lot with the, the crew that we were with before where people were constantly like bringing stuff and, it was it was cool. It was it was a cool thing, but yeah, yeah, and you know, like that's crazy. Um, yeah, so that that's what I think. I think you know you're automatically going to be drawn to a community, whatever you whatever you identify as, whatever you identify with. Mm -hmm. But I, I think one of the you know, it's kind of like the, the solution to bad speech isn't to restrict speech, but it's more speech. And so I think the solution to this kind of uh, exploitative religion is not less religion. Because people people are going to try to exploit people regardless. Mm. Um, you know, it's like I always say, like, World War II was not a religious war. Like, we just want to exploit people and take their resources, right? So it's like, what religion can do, though, is it can give us a metaphysical sort of logic base to say that's not a good idea yeah i can explain to you like why it's not a good idea to go and take people's shit and do mm -hmm. all that other stuff to mm -hmm. people but like definitely like the solution for people getting swindled out of their money by religion is to educate people on religion honestly that's what happened and and that that was also that is something that I did notice was that she was in her 60s and she wasn't reading the Bible for herself. Yeah, that's the, the thing. only thing that she was doing was reading their pamphlets. So when you just get their pamphlets, they, they can twist that any which way that they want. There's a lot of verses that you could just take. I mean, if you just take one clip of what somebody says, like that's that's kind of the the issue with the media right now. 100%. Is one clip of one one sound bite is taken from what somebody says. It's out of context and nobody looks to see what the context was. 100 percent. 100 percent. Um do I look down on atheists? No, I, I don't look down on atheists. Um, you know, some of the most generous people on this in this channel have have been atheists. Um, you know, I obviously have a fundamental disagreement with with my atheist friends relative to the to the God question, but um, especially from the specific theological background I come from. It's literally impossible to look down on anybody because what we believe is that you're we are so screwed up that God has to actively work to get me to even want the right things, mm -hmm. much less doing the right things. The very desire that I have for anything good, I believe I'm completely dependent on God for. So um, spiritually speaking, there's a question that get that gets asked a lot. Um, what do you have that you were not given? So if I was given everything that I have, then obviously you can't look down on anybody because you're you're a trust fund baby essentially, <laughs> um, and that's how I perceive myself. There go Ian. <laughs> <laughs> not not even Nazis, correct? I can't look down on Nazis. I can't say I'm better than them. No, we can't. But we <clears throat> but you can condemn the sins that they're that they're if they're taking part in that. Then yeah, that that should be condemned. Um, because the scripture is clear about how people should be treated and what the Nazis did to the Jews is completely unacceptable. Yeah, um, but, but I'm not, I'm not going to be like, yeah, those people are from some other planet and I don't have that yeah. capacity within myself or the people that I love don't have that capacity. Yeah, like, because at the end of the day, we all have that capacity. At the end of the day, it's like Vin said, it's regular people that were throwing the Jewish people in the concentration camps. It wasn't people that necessarily claimed to be Nazis. It was the people that lived in that area, sending their own their own neighbors to the gulags and to the, you know, if I'm getting the names right, you know. Mm -hmm. So that, but but that's the thing, like in Christianity, if you do Christianity right, then you, you the scripture says that we are, are, our feet are quick to shed blood. So that means given the right situation, all of us would, would put somebody else's life on the line, depending on what was at stake. 
you know, a lot of people might be like, oh, I've never, but then you think to yourself, like, I'm quick to say I wouldn't kill somebody, but then I'm like, well, hold on. If somebody was going after my kids and I have a weapon in my, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I hope that I would not do that, but I don't know. And so <laughs> I had a feeling, Ian, when I said the gulag that it was wrong, <laughs> that that was the other side. <laughs> um, what, what, just the concentration camps is what they would call it on the Nazi side. Yeah. Um, but you got, you guys got the idea, the gist. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, like that's the thing. Like it's so easy to judge people that have, that do, th that actually act out things that we don't believe we ever would. And it's so, we're so quick to overlook and let go of the things that we've done and the ways that we've affected people. Like a lot of people will walk around and say that they're like good people. Like somebody was in the comment section talking about like, oh, what did they say? They said that. Uh, that all Muslims are not evil and that all Christians are not, and that Christians are not good. Well, we never said that Christians were good. In fact, the, the, the scripture says that all of us are evil, even Christians, all of us are evil. And the only one that is good is God. That's it. Yeah. So we never said that Christians were good. <laughs> in fact, that's part of how you get in our tribe is by saying, you know what? I have a lot of problems. <laughs> Let me get some help. Yeah, but, and again, even that aspect of the message is not exactly. very popular anymore because, like, the leader has to put himself, like, orders of magnitude above everybody else. And so it's like everybody else sins, but the leader doesn't. So it's like the, the leader even uses that to wield the power, whereas if he was to say it correctly, he would say all of us are in that same boat, and that immediately puts the leader on the same platform as the people he's leading. Exactly, yeah. But, you know... If, if you're there for your ego and all the rest of it, obviously, you're not going to want that. It's an interesting right. song. And, it's a, it's Delaney, a good criticism. The, the scripture also tells us that everything good comes from God. So every good and perfect gift, everything that's good comes from God. So yes, human beings have good inside of us, but that's because we were created in the image and likeness of God. So that good that you see in each person, that's evidence that they were made in God's likeness. So that's why we should treat people with respect and honor is because people, they do have good. Even the worst have good. I mean, Hitler himself had a cat that he took care of so there was a good there was something good about him even though he was a horrible person in what he did mm -hmm. so that's what we're saying we're saying look we're all evil and we all have expressions of good and that's part of what christianity does that brings us face to face with the divine and that he helps us to to revamp our bad and push it toward the good because his goodness heals us and his kindness does so mm -hmm. uh Good song. Terrible people, but good song. Uh, it's a 9.4 for me. Mm, I'll match you. I'll match you on that one. Uh, more to come, you guys. We'll more be right back. More to come, back. dear listener. We'll be right back. The moral of the story is um, uh, don't give them people your money. Vin out. <laughs> sure. Sorry out. Go. No.